Hello, it's Carrie here, and I hope you are having a wonderful day um, wherever you are in the world. Um, so I wanted to make this episode to talk about why I think that recurring revenue is the most incredible thing uh, for any business and the impact that that could actually have for you. So I've got some fun ideas to get your ideas flowing and creativity flowing and to really just get you thinking about, like I said, how you could integrate a revenue stream of recurring revenue into your business. So um, before I get to those ideas, I just wanna explain why I truly believe that it is just such an amazing things to have in your business and why it's really, really helped me. It's honestly saved me, if I'm being completely honest with you. So um, I want to take you a little bit behind the scenes of my business and show you some of the messy parts of it. Um, I feel like it's good to kind of take off the veil and reveal the truth behind certain things. So here goes. <laughs> um, so... For the past couple of years, I have actually been really struggling um, with building a business, at, well, just my business in general. And um, from the outside, you probably can't really tell, but on the inside, I have really been struggling, you know, on a personal level. And so I wanna explain why I have been struggling. <laughs> it's nothing too dramatic, but you know, sometimes business is hard. So um, let me take you back to 2016. So in 2016, it was an amazing year for me. I got married. I took a lot of time off when I got married and it was incredible. Um, I did a lot of traveling. I wrote my book, She Means Business, and the business grew and was growing and everything was on the up and up and it felt so good. I really felt like I was in the flow with things. 2017 rolled around, the book was released, it became an international bestseller. That really built momentum. Visibility was going up and up. It was just, I felt more connected than ever before to the business. The business was growing and it just was really, really amazing. And I reached a point where I was like, crap, I need more help. Like I need to grow the team. And so I began to hire people really quickly and expand the team. So by the end of 2017, the team look, looked wildly different to what I started the year with. And by the beginning of 2018, I remember writing in my journal how overwhelmed I felt and I actually wrote down in it, I feel like I need space. And oddly, I put the word space in a box because I think that's how, how trapped I felt with certain things. But as the year progressed, I felt kept thinking what got me here won't get me there i need to change how i'm doing things i need to expand the team i need to grow i need to grow i need to grow and so i began to employ people full time and that was a if i'm being completely honest was a nightmare <laughs> i didn't know what i was doing i was making so many mistakes i then had to fire people which became a real emotional drain because it was just horrible like such a horrible thing to have to do um, I got so caught up in that and I got so caught up in the team and operation stuff that I f was starting to feel like really disconnected from the business. Then in October of 2018, I had my baby boy Casey and while that was amazing and the whole thing was amazing, I, I felt even more disconnected from FEA. But throughout that time, actually, what happened was the business continued to grow. Like the team were in amazing support. They really helped me um, to take time off for maternity leave, which was incredible. January of 2019 rolls around and we had our most successful month. We had um, like over 5,000 members in the members club. Like things were going amazingly well, given the whole messy situation that was going on in the background of me trying to figure out team and operation stuff. But 2019, my head was still very much in like team operations, figuring it out. I paid $60,000 to be part of a mastermind so I could learn more about team and operations. I was heavily trying to invest in like figuring it out. I realized that it was not my zone of genius and I really had a lot of learning to do. Um, we continued, I continued to grow the team. I continued to bring more people on board. We continued to hire more full-time employees. Um, and we actually started to move ahead with an office. So all this team operation stuff was happening. And as this happened, I became more and more detached from marketing. I became more and more detached from 
the whole reason I started FEA, which was because I had a message to share and I wanted to show up and connect with people in a real way. Yeah, I, I just felt really lost and confused with what I was even doing anymore. I felt like I spent my days on calls with the team, giving feedback to the team, being there to try and support the team and I felt like I didn't have any space left for showing up for my audience. I, we, you know, we were batching content and, you know, batch creating content to the extent where I was not really involved in so much of the process because I felt, thought that's what you do. Like you reach a level of success and you batch create, like that's how it works. And in doing that, I, yeah, felt really removed because I was so caught up in the back end of everything. I wasn't really there for the audience anymore. I wasn't really there for my members anymore. Like we were still creating amazing stuff and amazing content and the team were working on stuff and that was great, but I wasn't there. And I was really feeling the impact of that. And then the business started to feel the impact of that and the cracks began to show. The marketing really took a hit. Our engagement went down, our visibility went down, the traffic went down. We did a launch and it was probably one of our most unsuccessful launches ever. I then started to freak out and panic. Like I knew this had been coming because I'd been feeling so out of alignment with everything for such a long time. I'd been feeling so stuck. I would constantly repeat phrases to myself like, I feel stuck in the mud. It's like I'm in quicksand. I feel like I'm pushing water up a hill. I feel like I'm trying to get blood out of a stone. I am not kidding. The amount of times I've repeated those sentences over the past couple of years is insane. And I was desperate to get unstuck, but I was trying all these things, but I was just still staying stuck and it was driving me crazy. And so I had a couple of readings and the readings were interesting. It was like, you need to go back to basics and you you need to meditate. Like meditation kept popping up everywhere for me. Like every, every inspirational video I went to watch, every little thing, it was like meditate, meditate, meditate. And I, I like meditating, but I had fallen off the bandwagon with it because it was another thing that I wasn't giving myself permission to do because I felt so caught up in team and operations and doing all the things internally that I just didn't have the space. I felt dr so drained at the end of every day. It was like I physically couldn't be there for the team. I just physically couldn't do stuff. Anyway, I decided I got so fed up of my own crap. It was like Jim Rohn said, I had my day of disgust where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't keep feeling stuck. I'm fed up of saying the word stuck. <laughs> and I know better than this. Like I love mindset stuff. So why am I not taking my own advice and like doing something about it? And so I realized I really needed to reprogram my mind. I was so calibrated to the problem. I was completely out of alignment with the solution. I couldn't even see the solution. Like the solutions I was trying to work on were not. That was just connecting me more with the problems. And so I decided to give myself permission to meditate and to find myself again. And this whole idea of going back to basics made me realize that I actually really needed to reconnect with why I started FEA and what the whole purpose of it was. And I realized that it was just about me showing up and sharing a message. And if I could just start doing that again, I knew I had this good feeling about it. It felt good. It felt like a weight had been lifted and I knew in myself that that was the direction I needed to go in. And so instead of feeling so stuck up in the problem, I realigned myself with just what felt good. And that's what I started to take action on, stuff that made me feel really good. And so I got back to a better feeling place and things have started to move and things have started to change and I feel so much better myself. So why the bloody hell am I telling you this and what the heck has it got to do with recurring revenue? Well, I'm telling you this because I sometimes feel like it's nice and reassuring to really actually see the behind the scenes of other people's businesses because business isn't easy. Like, like I don't mean that as a Debbie Downer at all. Like, I just mean that there are so many ups and downs and sometimes it feels really impossible and sometimes you feel filled with anxiety and panic and doubt and worry and these are all natural they are all part of the process and I know I've just been sharing my struggles it's not like I've been really you know sad this whole time I have I'm still feel like a positive person I'm still a happy person but like it has weighed on me really heavy and I, it has 
been a struggle and it has been a struggle. So firstly, I wanted to share it with you because I wanted to just give some reassurance if you're struggling right now or if you go through a struggling phase in the future, I just want you to know you are not alone and you can do it. And for me, the quote that I always keep in my mind is successful people hang on when everyone else has let go. And I know that even on the days where I felt in complete despair, I just thought to myself, you'll figure this out. You will figure this out. You will get through this. Even though it might not feel like it, you will figure it out. And it's true, we will. If we keep going, if we keep looking and we keep opening ourselves up, eventually we will get back on track. It might take some time, but we will. But the, the other reason I wanted to share it, and this is where the recurring revenue part comes in, is because the reason I was able to sustain a really successful business throughout this time and generate six over, you know, six figures a month is because I have a membership site, is because I generate recurring revenue. Because in 2013, I came up with the genius idea to launch a membership site. And oh my goodness, am I grateful to my past self for doing that and making that decision and being bold and courageous enough to do it because I was terrified. And so in I'd built it up and we'd got it to the point where you know, we had like 5,000 amazing members that was generating so much monthly revenue. And because we had that, we have been able to sustain ourselves. And yes, it's gone in ups and downs. And like when things really hit hard with marketing, it definitely had an impact on on the success of the membership site. I'm not going to lie, it did, like it did. But, um, but, because we had the membership, we were able to keep re generating re revenue every single month. If I had a course or if I was selling one-off products, I honestly do not know what the state of the business would be in, in terms of like revenue, because I just wasn't there in a marketing capacity. I wasn't there showing up the way I, I knew I should have been. And so for me, I am so grateful to the fact that we do have recurring revenue um, because it's been an absolute blessing and it has enabled us to actually um, continue to be successful, <laughs> which is, blows my mind. So recurring revenue, this can be such a powerful thing for every single business and there are so many amazing ways you can go about creating recurring revenue so many different things you could offer so many things you could create and I think given the current situation in the world with the pandemic going on that the memberships are becoming a really amazing thing for people. So I was talking to a really great friend of mine, Stu McLaren recently, we were talking about membership site stuff. He's been an amazing mentor of mine when it comes to membership sites in the past. And um, we were chatting, he has a course called Tribe and he was telling me about some of his students and he said like one of them had a brick and mortar business, but the year earlier she'd started a membership site and it was because of the membership site that she was able to sustain her business because she had to close down her brick and mortar side of things but because of the membership, she was able to keep paying her staff. She was able to keep going and keep growing. And I was like, that is amazing. And that is the power of a membership site. But with membership sites and with generating that recurring revenue stream, there are so many people out there doing the most amazing niche things to actually to, to do it. So for example, she was telling me this story of one of his students who has a, um, I, I might get this wrong, but I think they paint, they teach how to paint door hangers. That is her membership site. How amazing is that? I think she has over a thousand members, a thousand people paying her every month to learn about how to decorate and paint door hang hangers. Is If that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. I think it's absolutely amazing. Like there's people who teach music lessons in membership sites. There's people like me who bring experts together and show up and teach and train and host live calls. Yeah, there's people who just do so many different things that add value on a month to month basis. So for example, graphic designers I've seen put template packs together where they'll put like template packs of like, I don't know, different templates for social media, different templates to use on your business, different templates for this. And they create the graphics so that other people can go and use them so that they don't have to create graphics themselves. Like that is so genius of a graphic designer to do and to create a membership where every month people are paying to access the template packs. Um, you know, there's p coaches out there that have created membership sites where it's every month they get on calls with their members and they coach them on calls. Um, people who have membership sites where they just do hot seats 
make calls where they know they've got an area of expertise that their audience really wants to tap into. So they create a membership site where they host hot seat calls and every month they get the chance to be in a hot seat call. So I've seen membership sites in so many different formats and so many different ways of doing it and also across so many different ideas. There's other membership sites I know of where they have like class plans. So they're teachers and they have plans for different classes that other teachers buy so they don't have to create their class plans every month or or something or you know something like that and again they're hugely successful membership sites um and i know from experience obviously i started my membership site with no knowledge of how to build a membership site and have turned it into a really really successful membership site so i know that if i can do it that anyone can do it so i want to share with you um some core ideas of like the different types types of membership sites and then ideas for what you could put into your membership site. So there are three main um, types of membership sites that you create or three main concepts. Um, There are probably more, but these are the three that I think are probably the biggest. So one, you can take your knowledge and expertise and you can teach it. You can share that knowledge and expertise. So you teach it, you share it in trainings, you teach it in live sessions, you help people. And that's kind of, that is the premise of my own membership site. So it's to teach people how to build wildly successful businesses. Um, The other type is where you cultivate an amazing community. So you're an amazing, um, you're an amazing connector. You're really good at pulling people together. So for example, like if you wanted to create a community for people who run a graphic design business, like that would be an incredibly powerful membership to be part of where you get to chat with other graphic designers and you all get to collaborate, share your ideas of how you're growing your businesses. It's not competition, it's collaboration. So for example, that is a really amazingly powerful idea and way to bring people together in a membership site. Um, and another option would be to provide a service. So for example, like it's kind of different it's subscription, but like if you look at Netflix, they are providing a service. You sign up to the subscription and you get movies. Um, so it, it, it's a, a more of a service base might be like getting template packs. If you, you know, if you're a graphic designer and you create template packs, or if you do done for you things, you might create a series of done for you things on a month to month basis that people get access to. Um, so things like that. So you're not teaching, Um, you're creating and you're giving that to someone on a month to month basis. So those are three big different, like big things that you could do in terms of like actually creating a membership site. And then in terms of how to actually deliver in a membership site, there are five different concepts that I think work really, really well. So the first is you could create monthly trainings or classes where you teach a skill or an expertise or something that's going to really add value to your members. So for example, for us in the members club, every month we release a new masterclass. We often collaborate with amazing experts to create these classes and they could be on topics like how to build your email list, how to grow an Instagram following, how to run Facebook ads. So we cover loads of different topics that our audience would find valuable and would help them to ultimately build a successful business. So if you have a think about it, what knowledge or skill set do you have or which experts could you work with that would serve your audience and help teach them something that they would find really, really valuable? So that's one thing, creating trainings or classes. And these can be pre-recorded. We pre-record ours and then we upload them to the website and then everyone can go and access that class. You could also do a live class on Zoom once a month as well. That would be an option as well. Another thing to think about when delivering content is collaborating with other people. Like it doesn't have to just be on you. There are probably lots of different people you could collaborate with potentially that could come and bring value to your audience. So who do you know? Who could you work with and collaborate with to bring value to your audience? So like I said just before, we often collaborate every month with different experts um, and we ask them to share their tips and their knowledge with our audience, with our members. So could you collaborate with people and if so who and just have a think and get your ideas flowing around that. Another idea for how to deliver in a membership site is hosting live calls. So you, it could be a live Q&A call, it could be a live training call, it could be a live hot seat call where you bring someone into the hot seat and you can see and hear each other and you can brainstorm and chat together. Um, but live calls are really powerful and really helpful for people. And now in this day and age, like being able to connect online like that is incredible. And it's something that's so valuable. I know membership sites that are just based on live calls alone. Um, 
Um, so if you thought about what live calls could you do, and you can only, you only have to do one, maybe two a month, and that would be so valuable for someone. So inside of ours, typically we host two live calls sessions a month a live hot seat call and a live goal setting and planning workshop um although sometimes we do more like at the moment i'm doing a live hot seat call every day <laughs> of the week um so but yeah but it adds so much value to people um so that could be something you could do so another idea is to actually host co-working calls these are virtual calls where you bring people together and you are like right okay in these next two hours we are going to all work together on this project so maybe for example you could work on different projects you could just decide to come together to work together for accountability or you could do say right okay we're going to come together we're going to work on creating a freebie together and then you talk about it you brainstorm ideas together and then you all mute yourselves and potentially turn your videos off and you work on stuff and then you have a check-in 30 minutes later and you check in with each other how are you getting on does anyone have any questions and then you go back to working and then you do another 30 minute work session and then you check in again after 30 minutes and if you do that and you collectively work together in two hours you can accomplish so much and you have support and help throughout that time to actually help you if you do feel stuck so those are really powerful sessions too um and then finally you an idea for a membership site is creating a group something as simple as a facebook group can be really powerful and just a powerful space for the right people to show up who are going to form a community that's going to be really supportive and really Really, really valuable so for in ours we've got a facebook group and it's an amazing community but like i was when i was going back to the graphic design example like if you were in a graphic design business being part of a group of graphic designers you know and even be more specific about how you're going to show up and serve and help support those graphic designers inside of a group um there's so many different ways to support each other in a facebook group um and so again that can be something that can be hugely valuable and that there's lots of memberships out there that are that revolve around having a facebook group so those are just some ideas to get you thinking about the possibilities for you. So what could you do? Is there anything that you could do that would actually help you to start this up so that you could have a stream of recurring revenue in your business? Um, have a think about it. So um, over this um, next week or the next few weeks, I'm actually hosting a free Facebook group. Actually, myself, it's a pop-up Facebook group and it's called Membership Mentoring with Carrie and Stu. So I have asked Stu McLaren if he will come and join me inside this free Facebook group so that we can show up for you and give you advice on how you can actually make this your reality and how you can build a membership site. Stu also has an amazing free series coming up that you should definitely get involved in. Like I said, he's been a mentor of mine. I believe in his work and I love everything he does. And he's hosting some free sessions where he's going to dive deeper into membership strategies and how to start and build a successful membership site. So we'll be talking about those within the pop-up group. He's going to be joining me for a Facebook Live. He's going to be joining me for multiple Facebook Lives in the group as well. So if you want more help and support with figuring out how you can actually generate recurring revenue for your business how you can start a successful membership site then definitely get involved in that even if you're like curious and you're not like sure if it will work or if it won't work for you but you're just kind of curious then come and join us it's just a free group free pop-up group and we'll just have fun in there and I will be there to help serve you as much as I possibly can on this topic because like I said recurring revenue has been such a blessing for my business and it's just been incredible and it's created so much confidence for me in the sense of even when I've gone through really tough patches where mentally I felt like out of alignment and I've just been feeling internally like I'm struggling the business has still been thriving and that is such a powerful position to be in it creates a lot of more security a lot more confidence to know that every month you are going to be generating a really significant revenue so I personally I'm a huge advocate of membership sites. Um, so yeah, if you want to come and join us over in the pop-up Facebook group, then I will leave the link for you to come and join us. Anyway, I hope that you have found value from this episode. And like I said, like sometimes you don't realize the, obviously we don't realize the messiness going on in the background because it's not like something we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. We just often see people's highlight reels across social media and things. But I think it's, I think it's nice to talk about this stuff, to know that actually, you know, we all go through phases where we struggle, but it's part of it and we'll all get through it. And I think this is why it's so important to come together and to, to talk about this stuff.
But anyway, like I said, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. I would love to hear from you in the comments if it has been valuable for you. Um, if you want me to talk more on how I got unstuck, I know I touched on it a little bit, but if you'd like me to talk more on like how I really got unstuck and some of the things that I've truly worked on to help move me out of this phase of feeling like I was hitting a brick wall, then let me know in the comments because I would be happy to open up and talk more about that. So if you've got specific questions for me, um, that would be amazing because I can answer them in a, in a future episode for you. Um, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes and I will see you next week. Mm-hmm.